Welcome in to the Cubs Talk podcast, a production of NBC Sports Chicago and NBCSportsChicago.com. Claire Philippi, Tony Gill are always at the controls. Gordon Whitmire is in San Diego, California. Tim Stebbins and I are holding down the fort here in Chicago. And the winter meeting's about to wrap up, but there has been activity. We'll start with you, Gordon, in San Diego. We woke up to news that Jason Tyone had signed a $68 million four-year deal with the Chicago Cubs. Your thoughts first. Well, you know what San Diego means in German, right? Yes. 100%. Discovered in 1854 by the Germans. Yeah, go ahead. Exactly. Exactly. It means the Cubs aren't getting their shortstop anytime soon. They're going to have to wait for it. That's what it means this week in San Diego at the winter meetings. So, what happened is, and I think you alluded to it uh, w- with your uh, partial question that I interrupted, was that uh, Aaron Judge went back to the Yankees. We know that. 40 friggin' million a year. Uh, as of last night, we thought he was going to the Giants. A lot of people in the business thought he was going to the Giants as, as the Jamison Tyon deal came down uh, late at night. Um, everybody thought he was going to the Giants. Well, had he gone to the Giants, the Giants – would have spent their big their big ticket money on that but because he went back to the yankees giants are walking around with a whole bunch of cash to spend and orders to spend it and uh they're going to go big they're going to turn their attention to korea and uh that means his price might have just gone up both in terms of years and aav and if so that that puts a pinch on the cubs efforts they're still in on him and dansby swanson but as hot as that looked Monday and Tuesday, when Trey Turner came off the board with that, that big contract he got from the Phillies, it has, it has slowed down because the Giants, and not just the Giants, but the Padres, who are at the fringes of that Aaron Judge market, are also flashing a lot of cash around and could pivot to one of the remaining shortstops. So that market might take at least a few more days to sort of sort out before it picks up again. Could happen, could happen next week. Uh, we could get closer to the holidays. Sam, what about your thoughts when you heard the tie-in on signing? I like it. Um, I think for who's left, I think he was definitely a good pickup. I mean, I don't, I don't think Verlander, Degrom, et cetera, was ever realistic here, and that's not, that's not necessarily a Cubs thing. Those guys are also guys who. You know, Texas is making a push with Bochi and, and Verlander. It's going to the Mets, who won 100 plus games. Um, the only other guys that I could think of that, if I were to project out second tier, I guess if you will, would be like Chris Bassett, Evaldi, and then we know Senga, who I don't even know if he is second tier. He's probably more first tier at this rate. But Evaldi and Bassett have qualifying offers attached. So with the way the starting pitching market is evolved and guys coming off, Tyone getting him and. Uh, at the moment they did, I think that's a good star. I still think if they, they could afford to get another starter, we've talked about Smiley, and maybe those QO guys present themselves down the line. Gordon, what about your thoughts on Wilson Contreras getting 87.5 over five years to go to the Cardinals? Did you see my world's greatest Major League Baseball free agency predictions ever? That's where I said he was going. You did. I was, I, was predict, I was predicting basically a five-year deal, and that's what he got. And I, I think I said on this podcast earlier in the week, between 80 and 100, that's what he got. Um, I think it's great for him. Cap, if I'm going to ask, if, if I want to know anybody's opinion on this podcast, it isn't mine. It's yours. You're, you're the Cubs fan. What do you think of that guy who I know you like personally, but also as a fan, going to that team yeah i'm ticked i'm not happy about it because the cubs are in the catching market it's not as though their number one prospect is some hot shot you know first round draft pick that's ready to go and take the job they're in the market to go get another catcher the fact that he's going to go to their rival and replace a future hall of famer and they said he's good enough for them and he's not good enough to stay here I love the guy. He's been great to my special needs son, Brett. I've told that story. The fact that I got to take Brett, we were on the phone about it today. He's like, Dad, I can't root for the Cardinals. I said, no, we can root for Wilson. We just won't root for his team. 
it bothers me. I can't believe there wasn't a way to work it out and figure out how we can bridge our differences. It wasn't a financial thing. They just didn't want them back. And I don't understand right. why. They didn't even they didn't even try. And 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 Cap, to build on your point so that people don't think this is just a cap bias, this guy is a good human being. This guy is the real deal. What you see him display publicly in terms of his passion and his emotions and all that, that's all real. And one of the things that impressed the Cardinals, and they'll tell you this, is that he came in and said, I just care about winning and I want to work hard to get even better than I am now. That is who he is. And that makes him, among other things, probably the most motivated free agent to sign now and probably in this entire market by the time all said and done. I think it's uh, revealing, too, that we, we've we talked on here about, we thought, uh, the defensive discussion around him was probably overblown. We, we all thought that, you know, we've seen the guy play and what he can do back there. And I think it's telling that the team that had Yachty freaking Molina as their catcher as long as they did, and now that they needed a catcher because Yachty's retiring, that's where this guy wound up, a team that pitching and defense and run prevention, that is a calling card for St. Louis. So we've said it's probably overblown. I think that's a pretty good example and uh, evidence yet that, yes, it is. If if that was a huge issue, as some people wanted it and made it out to be, I don't think the Cardinals, for all the things they stand for and what they're looking for, go get Wilson Contreras. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, let me mean? point this Let me point this out, too. Um, I mean, you talk about his, his defense and this and this. And this. The guy's got one of the biggest arms – among catchers in all of baseball control and, the running yeah. game exactly and and by the way what happened when david ross retired and john lester was still around his personal catcher gone the guy that helped him control the running game with uh, because of his yips and inability to, to be his guy and when i asked him when i sat down with him that season and asked him what about the criticism about wilson and being able to catch and framing and all that he said what I say about that. Throw an effing strike. That's the answer to how to handle that. Uh, the guys, the guy can block pitches. The guy can throw. The guy's athletic. The guy cares. The guy cares about his pitchers. He cares about winning. And if he's not the greatest framer in the world, okay, fine. Throw an effing strike. All right, let's talk about what's next. You're going to fly home tomorrow. The Cubs contingent is starting to get their way out of San Diego. Most will leave Thursday morning. So where are they with three shortstops still on the board? Are they involved on all three? Tim, who would you hire now? Both of us like Trey Turner. He's off the board. So where are we? Um, I mean, I, I've been I've been adamant about Carlos Correa. I think – I think if from a Cubs fan perspective, I would be afraid of the Giants in this market now. I can't tell anybody how how they should feel, but Aaron Judge not going to the Giants as Gordon you just talked about, and and that big big ticket item. And I know the Giants have talked about throwing cash around, and so maybe Judge and Correa would have been realistic. But now that Judge is not obviously an option for the Giants, that that kind of is a new wrinkle in this market that. Um, as deep as we've talked about the Cubs being involved in Gordon, you just said they still are like how much, how, how high would the giants be willing to go? That's a new, that's a new wild card in this market that may have exist, existed before, but I think it certainly is there now. And, and that could definitely throw a wrench into the Cubs plans. If you would. Yeah. The, the one thing I'd say to you guys about that in the freaking Chicago Cubs, yeah, I don't care if it's the giants. Screw that. If you want a guy, put the freaking money on the table. He's even pissing off the dogs in his neighborhood. You hear that? Yeah, that's my dog, Stanley. I got to let him out. By the way, Cap, you're stealing my line. That's my line. They're the Chicago freaking Cubs. Spend whatever they want. Now, I will say this. Look, man, we already knew Correa was going to be looking to, to beat Trey Turner's deal, 11 and, and 300. Now what is it? Is he going to get 12 years? Is he going to get 350? Uh, I don't know. And then what? And what about judges' market? Judges' market. Uh, judges' numbers jumped from thirty something to forty pretty fast when the, with the Giants involved, and with the, with San Diego deciding that they wanted to get in the mix too. So, you know, what does that do? I don't know. But it might it might mean that the Cubs pivot at some point to Dansby Swanson 
it, it might also mean that the Cubs stay in it and just get outbid. I mean, they, they might try as they might. He might just choose somebody else because, I mean, he gets overpaid. Uh, fine. But at this point, as we sit here now, Xander Bogarts looks more likely to go back to Boston. And, and at this point, the Cubs aren't deep in on him. They have checked in on him, but not at this point in any significant deep way. The other two guys, they're still in on, they're still in contact on, in the running for uh, but it, but not maybe as hot and and accelerated of a market as it seemed like it was Tuesday. Tim, if you looked at this team and they didn't get one of those three, where do you add a bat then? What do you do? You cannot miss on one of these three. You can't. <laughs> Who who's out there at that point? Uh, I still think first base is that's an a unresolved free agent market, but be an area that the Cubs were looking to add to. And, and Trey Mancini is sitting there. I don't know if Trey Mancini is a fit in their eyes. I can't speak to that, but yeah, um, but, but Tim, look at the, the three, the top three guys are all gone. And right? first base, you're saying Rizzo, Abreu and uh, Bell. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, the one thing about Mancini is, I guess if you wanted, if you're, if you're expecting Mervis to play a role, maybe not out of camp, you'd have a left, right kind of platoon option there. Uh, they need more left-handed bats though. I don't know where you add bats, man. I really don't. I think Cody Bellinger is, you can't, you can't say that you're going to get 2017 to 19 Cody Bellinger, but that's, that's an, an ad that he's going to bring you production for in some level offense, Maybe if the offense isn't there, he'll produce in other ways, I guess I'm saying. But you need bats. Um, I don't know where they go from that point. Like, even we talk about uh, trades, right? Like, the potential to find a trade route. Well, two of their top outfield prospects, one of them, Alexander Canario, who potentially maybe you you would feel comfortable dipping into your farm system if, if health wasn't a thing or on lack of health. Well, that option may not be there for, for some prospects. So, I don't know. And you still need a catcher, too, by the way, especially – as much as the Contreras thing was likely for months, like you got to address that too. Okay. Well, and, and, and that's a scarce market in particular. That might be the next thing they address just because it's not going to cost as much and they might be able to jump on one of those guys. Let me read you a tweet from Barstool Carl, who's a great follow on social media. Cubs are spending $34.5 million next year combined for Cody Bellinger and Jamison Tyone. Rizzo and Contreras will make thirty-four million. Which combo would you rather have? I think we'd probably all agree on that one. Yes. Correct. And you're looking for a catcher and a first baseman. How you doing, brother? Good. How are you, man? Good. Good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But then I, I would say yes, and then I would say. With that, with then they there's still starting pitching options out there. Yeah, you you take Rizzo Contreras based on their needs, and you go spend your other money on a starting pitcher instead of the alternative that we're talking about, where they have the starting pitcher, but now you're looking for bats in a scarce market for bats. Gordon, who was that who walked by you? That was Jack McKeon, Trader Jack. I thought. Get him involved. Get get him him involved in uh, swinging some deals oh. for the Cubs. Yeah, we'd have ten trades done by an hour from now. That's right. Go ahead, Tim. I, I'm I'm just I don't know what they do for bats. I mean, one of the positions you have to address is naturally a defensive first position. And Christian Vasquez is actually around league average the last four years, and I say four years because that's when he really started becoming the main guy uh, in Boston. So that's not Wilson Contreras, though. We we talked all winter about even if you get a, a Carlos Correa, for example with the loss, the expected loss then, and now the official expected uh, loss of Contreras now, you have to replace that production somehow. So uh, they need bats, and now they need another bat because one – actually, I'll say the best hitter on their team last year, guy who led you in OPS+, plus, OPS, I think he was uh, second in home runs, third in RBIs. Like, go look at any stat, and he, he only played 113 games. Uh, there's a need there, and it, it is uh, – it is scarce for what they could potentially do, I say. I would say. I'm going to say this, Cap, to your question. they got to get one of these shortstops. And if they don't, it doesn't matter what else you get. These are the best hitters that are on the market, and they fill the exact right positional need for you, short-term and long-term. 
if you don't get him, you might as well just punt on the season again and hope Cody Bellinger plays well enough that you can flip him at the deadline because that's what you're going to be looking at. You're going to be looking at next year. You're going to yeah, be looking at trying you're trying to do something next winter. And, and if they don't get one, epic fail. Epic. Epic fail. I wrote it coming into the meetings. Go big or go home. Now, they're going to go home without one of these guys. I, I said in the story, you don't have to go get, you don't have to necessarily take the guy home with you from the meetings, but you better be down the road enough that you get it done. And, and if they don't get it done, epic fail. The whole I, I say, epic fail. I'll say this though. While I would go full press on Carlos Correa, I think the Cubs are going to wind up with one of the shortstops. I think it very well this, may be Dan by, by the way. Uh, a Chicago dignitary just walked by. I think he walked behind my screen to avoid us. Rick Hahn, who's was uh, the only man in town that did less today than the Cubs, I think. <laughs> wow. Well, I, <laughs> well, I think the Cubs are going to get one of the shortstops. Uh, but I do Dan's, too, but I hope you're right. But if it's Dansby Swanson, and he's had two good years uh, offensively. He's supplied power. Um but I think in that case, the need to add a little bit more offense would still exist. And I think I think even if you get Correa, it would. But we know the track records of one. You'd feel in where the what the fit would be and what production you could expect. Like there's a there's a difference there between those two guys. Well, I agree with you. All right, Gordon. We'll uh, I'll be up. So will Tim. Tim never sleeps anyway. He's a vampire. So when <laughs> anything breaks tonight, wake us up emergency podcast time go enjoy a good dinner in san diego okay buddy yeah i'm gonna go get a get a slice of pizza or something and write about three stories pizza pizza in san diego blows <laughs> um maybe i'll get some fish pizza or something they got fish tacos maybe i'll go get a fish taco fish tacos now you're talking go get them cap do they got a malnati's out there or is that arizona only that way arizona uh, Indiana, Wisconsin, Illinois. No. I think, hilarious. I think this is hilarious because, Cap, you, you – look, man, I love you, but you talk like a TV guy. I come to these winter meetings, man. I'm a news guy. I'm a baseball writer. There ain't no time to go out there and get a nice dinner. Jesus freaking Christ. You can get tacos quick. I got to break away to do it. Can't do it. I got to. There's nothing to break away from. Rick Hahn's doing nothing. And everyone else has left. I should ask Rick where he's going to dinner because he's headed somewhere right now. He looks all happy and relaxed. That's messed up. Right. He hasn't had to write one check. All right. You guys <laughs> have a great rest of your night. And uh, we'll talk. And emergency podcast is always available. So have a great trip back, Gordon. All right, man. We'll All right, soon. Tim, Gordon, Claire, Tony, I'm David Kaplan. That puts a ribbon on this edition. We've been doing them every day for the Cubs Talk podcast from the winter meetings. I'm David Kaplan. Take that.